Well, good day. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Darissa Vincentini of the uh, Invasive Species Center. Uh, Darissa, you are the Community Science Coordinator. Yes. Well correct. done. Well, that's a pretty lofty role, pretty uh, heavy-duty title. So uh, excited to have you here now. Um, of course, I'm going to assume we're going to talk about a species of something that is invasive and certainly there's been a lot of coverage in the news recently mm -hmm. about everything from insects to specific types, types of plants. So today you want to bring us information on the Himalayan balsam. Yes, absolutely. So the Himalayan balsam is an invasive herbaceous annual plant. Okay. Um, and it's native to the Himalayas, if you might have guessed okay. from the name. <laughs> Um, and it is located here in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay. Um, and it was brought into or introduced into Canada and North America because of its absolutely gorgeous flowers. Okay. Um, so as a garden ornamental. And I, I don't blame anyone for that because they are really beautiful. Okay, yes. Um, and we do have some pictures behind us. Now, okay, so brought in as an ornamental. Now, I did do some moderate research and what I have learned is that uh, they are very very densely uh, uh, rooted and that they they uh, they are very prolific so you know whether that's by virtue of cross-pollination or however they're spreading but they do spread they spread very rapidly and like most invasive species that's one of the characteristics of being an invasive species is the ability to reproduce very quickly um, but the Himalayan balsam plant actually can produce about 600 seeds per plant Ooh. and they're very <laughs> viable um, and they're also part of the impatient family so it's okay. a touch-me-not species so as those seeds ripen if you were to touch them they explode Yes. Okay. Um, and what happens is that those seeds then explode from animals rubbing up against them, humans touching them, um, even s severe wind can explode, explode uh, the seed capsules. And then those get dispersed on the ground and you get really, really dense stands that are crowding out and competing with native species. Okay. Those seeds can also land into waterways because they typically do um, invade along river and stream banks. Okay. And once they're in the stream, they can then, uh, you know, flow downstream and spread downstream as okay. well. Okay, and, and propagate another 600 seeds per yeah. plant. So, okay, <laughs> so we have an idea then of how, how quickly and how um, efficiently, if you wish, um, they do spread. Um, and I'm actually thinking, you know, because when I was little, I used to like to touch those kinds of plants that explode. It was very exciting. Oh, so, absolutely. Um, and that isn't as random a thought as, as you might imagine. Are there any kind of health concerns that this, this particular plant poses? Like some of them can cause blindness. Yes, and yes they can... absolutely. There are plants to be cautious of. You know, the giant hogweed is yes. one of them. We do have a native um, cousin to giant hogweed, which is cow parsnip. Okay. Um, but no, Himalayan balsam does not have any okay. ne like negative human health impacts. Um, nothing like that. But if you are looking to kind of pop some seeds, there is a native jewelweed species, which is also an impatient and a touch me not. Okay. Um, so if you're looking, especially with kids, to go and do that, I suggest finding one of those plants and then okay. um, you can still have some fun and spread native seeds. <laughs> okay. I mean, I too could be categorized as a touch me not, but I am less <laughs> likely to explode. Um, so yes, okay. Now I know as well, um, you know, because we've been chatting that you have some events coming up, uh, July and August. July is exciting because you've already identified your locations, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So starting July 6th from 2.30 to 7.30, we're gonna be hosting a public poll at the Drake Street Park, which is along the Clark Creek in Sault Ste. Marie in the East End. Okay. Um, and that's open to the public and anyone who wants to come out and pull some of these plants. The nice thing about Himalayan balsam is that it is the best kind of stewardship opportunity um, plant because the root system is actually only like this deep. Oh, okay. So you can really easily just pull that plant out. Yoink them um, out. Right. And yeah, so all hands on deck is, you know, the <laughs> best way to go about it. The Drake Street location actually has, um, you know, a really, really dense stand. It okay. would almost look like a field of grass, but it's Himalayan balsam. And mind you, they're also much taller than grass. Um, <laughs> But it is very dense, so the more the merrier coming okay. out to that. Um, it's also great for youth, um, getting them involved. I know that kids really love popping the, uh, the stems because they make a fun sound. Oh. <laughs> oh. I love noises, yes. yes. 
<laughs> okay, good. So yeah, it's great for everyone. And then at following that, Clean, one of our partners, Clean North, will be hosting a poll um, July 15th. And that one will be in the West End. So you know we're trying to make it ex as accessible to everyone. Nice. That one will be in the West End at Mike Zook Park in the okay. Bayview area. Um, and then following on the 23rd, um, Lake Huron North will be hosting one, again, back at the Drake Street location because that location is just so dense. And then more plants might have popped up since that first one. And then we have more to come in August. Okay. We have uh, Sue Naturalist also hosting a um, public poll. And then we're also going to have Science North and their, one of their summer camps hosting <laughs> polls with the kids. So Put them to work. if you have any, you know, any kids at home that you're looking to send to a science camp um, and you want them to learn about invasive species, definitely check out Science North. Okay, there you go. Um, okay, so it, I do have, you know, because questions will come to me. So this isn't the sort of plant that you can manage just by mowing it. So you actually can. It is possible. Um, the stem has nodes on it and it, in order to actually manage it by cutting or mowing you have to make sure you're cutting it extremely low okay. below that very first node now the risk is that you might have to do it more than once of course if it grows back within that year the nice thing about himalayan balsam though is that the seeds are it is an annual so okay. it's not gonna it doesn't have roots that are gonna come back um but the seeds are only viable for 18 months okay so as long as you're going back and you're managing an, a location for two years in a row, mm -hmm. you have a high success rate of eradicating that that area as long as there's no new seed introduction. So what happens to the seeds and the plants then uh, over winter, which sometimes feels like it's 18 months long? Um, what, what do they still, they just lie dormant until the spring or? Does that kill them? Can that kill them? I don't know exactly, <laughs> oh. um, but I, they would lie dormant and then like any plant kind of okay. just be released in the spring. I'm not sure if our winters kind of play any impact on how viable the seeds are in the okay. spring, but I, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I wonder, <laughs> I, I may look that up myself. There you go. <laughs> well, Jarissa, thank you very much. Uh, very informative um, and uh, I'm going to be watching for these things now. Those of you who do watch the interviews know that I will be posting um, a very informative article summary of our discussion today along with this, uh, this interview uh, with all of the relevant links that will provide you with any additional information as well. Um, you know, just to recap the events in July that have already been established. So, Darissa, thank you so much for taking the time um, and uh, coming in and educating us about uh, the Himalayan balsam. Thank you very much. And if I may, uh, this wouldn't be possible without some funding from the city of Sault Ste. Marie through the Community Development Fund. So, oh, fantastic! Thank you very much. Okay, we didn't even talk about your organization, Invasive Species Center. Then, um, is I believe you said a not-for-profit, yes. right? Okay, because I, I actually thought it was it was directly funded, um, so not directly funded at all. So we do have a lot of funding from the provincial government. We work closely with federal partners as well through okay. the Natural Resources Canada as well as CFIA, a Canadian Food Inspection Agency. There it is. Um, but we do, we are not for profit and we're looking for partners and we continue to work with different entities to continue to combat the invasive species across Canada. Can people make donations if they so choose? I believe so. There is a link to okay. donate on our website. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were hitting all of the relevant points because that too is important in terms of managing invasive species. We have you know, a, an excellent team of, of very capable, highly intelligent people. Um, so let's do what we can to support them. Either go out and yank some, like some Himalayan balsam or, uh, you know, see what you can do to help otherwise. Again, Darissa, thank you so much. Thank you.